Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome to this session in the series on history, science, and faith in Islam. In the last session, we covered the period of Ali radiallahu anhu. In today's session, our focus is on the aftermath of the civil wars. Summarily, the civil wars marked a watershed in Islamic history. The curtain fell on the age of the Khulfai Rashidun, which is the rightly guided Khalifas. Shia Sunni sectarianism, which runs like a giant fault line across Islamic history, surfaced. The border between Persia and Syria was hardened at the Euphrates River. The convulsions gave birth to the Kharijites and their brand of extremism. For these reasons, Muslim historians refer to the civil wars as Fitnatul Kabir, the Great Schism. With the assassination of Ali ibn Abu Talib, anhu, the curtain fell on the age of faith in Islamic history. The Prophet founded a civilization based on faith. Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali strove to build upon the foundation laid by the Prophet ﷺ. Never has there been a time in history as there was for the first 40 years after the Hijrah. For a brief moment, Faith ruled supreme over the blade of the soldier and the wealth of the merchant. Medina was the capital of one of the largest empires the world had ever seen, but the rulers walked on earth like mendicants with the fear of God in their hearts and the vision of the hereafter in their souls. Even as Islam spread across the vast continents of Asia and Africa. It was challenged by the power of wealth. The vast treasures of Persia, accumulated over centuries of imperial rule, presented a temptation that some Arabs could not resist. The struggle between faith and wealth surfaced during the period of Uthman anhu and consumed his Khilafat. Ali anhu waged a valiant battle to extinguish the flames of greed and power, but the fire consumed him too, and out of the ashes arose the dynastic rule of the Umayyads. Amir Muawiyah was the first soldier king in Islamic history. With him, the Islamic body politic came under the sway of dynastic rule. The pattern established by him persisted until the 18th century when the merchants of Europe supplanted the Muslim soldier kings of Asia and Africa. An outstanding soldier, a shrewd politician, and an able administrator Muawiyah fought Ali anhu to a standstill and declared himself the Khalifa in the year 658 of the Common Era. As soon as Ali anhu was assassinated in 661, Muawiyah made preparations to invade Mecca, Medina, and Iraq. Hassan ibn Ali anhu had been elected the Khalifa in Kufa, and he marched forth with a force of 12,000 Iraqi to meet Muawiyah. But the Iraqis proved unreliable allies and deserted before the battle started. At the Treaty of Madain in the year 661 of the Common Era, Hassan anhu abdicated the Khilafat in favor of Muawiyah, 
in return for general amnesty and an annual stipend of 200,000 dirhams. He retired to Medina to live there as a great teacher and imam. The abdication brought to an end the first phase of the civil wars that began with the assassination of Uthman radiallahu anhu. It also consolidated the power of Muawiyah over all Muslim territories. With the Treaty of Madain, power passed from Bani Hashim of the Quraysh to Banu Umayyah, another branch of the Quraysh. In pre-Islamic days, the Bani Hashim were the custodians of the Kaaba, whereas Banu Umayyah were rich merchants and were responsible for the defense of Makkah. In modern language, the Bani Hashim were the priests, whereas the Banu Umayyah were the merchants and soldiers. Prominent members of Banu Umayyah, such as Abu Sufyan, were bitterly opposed to the mission of the Prophet in the early days of Islam, but had embraced the new faith after the conquest of Mecca in 628 CE. The Prophet had sought to weld together the two tribes under the transcendence of Islam. The newfound unity survived through the Khilafat of Abu Bakr and Omar, but with the Khilafat of Uthman, who was himself an Umayyah, the old rivalry surfaced again. As we have pointed out, certain members of Banu Umayyah took advantage of the pious and retiring nature of Uthman anhu and grew enormously rich. This development opened Uthman anhu to charges of favoritism and ultimately led to his assassination. In the ensuing chaos, Ali who had been nominated the Khalifa, but Muawiyah, who was an Umayyad, demanded khisas, that is, retribution for Uthman's blood before he would accept the Khilafat of Ali Radilawanhu. Ali Radilawanhu was politically too weak to do this, and Muawiyah deftly exploited this weakness to incite the Syrians against Ali Rabanhu and wage war against him, which culminated in the Battle of Sifin. History repeats itself. Divisions among humankind, based on tribes, nations, and race, resurface time and again. The Banu Umayyah, who were merchants and soldiers in pre-Islamic years, benefited enormously from the conquered gold of Persia. Bani Hashim, on the other hand, tried to keep the Islamic community focused on the rugged simplicity of Islam. The third Khalifa, Uthman anhu, was an Umayyah and a pious, shy, retiring, aged man. The power of wealth asserted itself during this time, and those who were in a position to exploit the wealth, namely the merchant soldier class of Banu Umayyah, did so. When Ali Radravan, who a Hashemite, tried to redirect the flow of history towards the pristine purity of Islam, Faith collided with greed. The civil wars ensued, pitting Banu Umayyah against Bani Hashim. The first phase of the civil wars ended with the triumph of the merchant warrior and the abdication of the rule of faith. An era ended and a new era began. 
The civil wars also gave birth to the Horijites. As we have pointed out, these were disgruntled men who walked out of Ali Radhiravanhu's camp when he accepted arbitration with Muavia. Their position, though it was couched in democratic terms, was extremist. They sought to justify their misguided position that Ali Radhiravanhu had compromised his faith. They also maintained that the Khilafat should be open to any capable Muslim, not just the Quraysh. Their methods were bloody, and they let loose a merciless reign of terror, indiscriminately killing men, women, and children. Both Ali Ridravanu and Muawiyah waged war against them. Although defeated time and again, the Kharijites resurfaced in Islamic history as a recalcitrant group for 500 years. In the 14th century, they gave up their violent ways and settled down in North Africa. Some historians, among them the great Ibn Khaldun, who traveled through North Africa in 1330, to 1334 of the Common Era, related them to the Ibadis, who are known for their devout poetry in praise of the Prophet The civil wars had arrested the explosive advance of the Muslim armies. But the civil wars at bay, the advance resumed again. Muhlab bin Abi Sufra captured the frontier areas of modern Pakistan. Saeed bin Uthman captured Samarkand and Bukhara in Central Asia. Uqba bin Nafi raced across North Africa and the Atlantic Ocean. It was this famous general who, upon reaching the ocean, urged his horse forward until it could advance no further and then, turning towards the sky, declared, O oh God, had this ocean not interrupted me, I would have reached the farthest corners of the earth to extol thy name. This exclamation captures, in a nutshell, the motivation for early Muslim conquest. Faith was the propulsive force that provided this momentum. Islam had taught the Muslims that humankind was born into freedom and that a human ought to bow down before God and no one else. The struggle of the early Muslims was to establish a world order wherein only the name of God was extolled and men and women were freed from bondage to false gods or tyrants who acted as if they were gods. The most memorable accomplishment of Amir Muavia was the building of a strong navy to break the stranglehold of the Byzantine Empire in the Eastern Mediterranean. A navy was built and Jandab bin Abi Umayya was appointed Amirul Bahr which is the source of the English word admiral. Rhodes and other islands in the eastern Mediterranean were captured, and in 671 CE, Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, was besieged. The siege lasted several months. Byzantine defenses were strong, and the Greeks were well versed in the use of naphtha, which is Greek fire, a precursor of modern-day napalm. As the siege prolonged, there was an outbreak of cholera aboard the ships, and the Muslims had to break off the engagement. It was during this siege 
that a companion of the Prophet, Abu Ayyub Ansari, died and was buried beneath the ramparts of the fort of Constantinople. Located within modern-day Istanbul, the tomb of Abu Ayyub is one of the chief attractions of that beautiful city. Amir Muawiya was a soldier, and he paid special attention to the armed forces. He encouraged innovations in military technology. It was during the reign of Muawiya that Muslim engineers invented the Minjanik, which is a machine to propel large stones into enemy ramparts. He modernized the army, introduced special units for desert combat and snowy terrain. New forts were built. Muawiya was the first ruler to mint coins with Arabic inscriptions, displacing Byzantine and Persian coins, thereby reasserting the fiscal independence of the Muslim state. The city of Khairawun was founded in the Maghrib. Administrative record keeping was systematized. Old canals were re-excavated and new ones dug. The police force was strengthened and the postal system, which was created by Omar ibn al-Khattab for military use, was now open to the public. Muawiyah bin Abu Sufyan was a companion of the Prophet on, on several occasions, the Prophet used his services as a scribe of the Qur'an. In this capacity, he is respected by all Muslims. It is his role as a historical figure where differences arise. While his accomplishments were noteworthy, he is also known as the Amir who condoned the cursing of Ali bin Abu Talib in public, a practice abandoned 50 years later by the Khalifa Omar bin Abdul Aziz in the year 719 CE. Most regrettably, Muawiyah imposed his tyrant son Yazid on the Muslims. This brings to a close our session on the aftermath of the civil wars. In the next session, inshallah, we'll cover the tragic events leading to the tragedy of Karbala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.